Hey team, in this video what we're going to go through is how to edit a Zoom interview. Uh, it's actually very, very simple as a process. There's fewer edits that you're probably going to do with this. Uh, so we're going to go through the real fundamental content, which is adding in an opener, including titles and a logo, as well as trimming content as required. Now with a Zoom interview, your goal is to get this done in one shot, just like you would with an in-person interview. So once you press record, you don't want to have to edit out pieces in the middle. Have it be natural flowing conversation because the more time you're editing out all the ums, the ahs, the maybes, or you know, the start or end of a certain question, that's just more time spent away from doing what you do best, which is meeting people, building relationships, and prospecting in your community. So I'm going to be using Filmora X here, also known as Filmora 10. It is the most, uh, you know, modern version of Filmora at this point in time or at the time of filming this. If you're watching this sometime in the future, you may find there's a more modern version. Um, so keep an eye out for that tutorial. But uh, if you're using an older version of Filmora, it's very much the same. What you have is the same overview. Where in the top right corner, you've got the area of the editor where you'll see the edits that you're doing. Down the bottom is where you'll actually have your media and effects that you create your video from. And in the top left corner, you've got your different categories of things, such as audio, titles, transitions, effects, etc., as well as the media that you've incorporated. So first things first, with your videos, always start from the very beginning. First thing that I recommend doing is adding in a title. Now, the title that you want to add in for this particular case is an opener. Because what I'm going to do is create an opening screen which introduces my video before the video starts. So to find that, click on Titles and you'll find it under the included area. Now, if you are on this area of your screen and you find this is minimized and it's not uh, collapsed or opened like I have here, uh, just click on the little arrow and that will expand it. And there are different types of titles that you can use. You have openers, regular titles, lower thirds, subtitles and end credits, as well as a bunch of the same things under new concept, which you'll see down here. Now, each of these different titles present differently on a video. An opener is best for the beginning and end of a video. It usually is a graphic over a background. So you don't want to have this on top of any video footage. A title uh, is something that is going to go over the top of an image or video within your video. So that way you can actually see your background, which is represented here with a black screen. Okay, an opener will actually have its own background to it, as you can see here. Now, lower thirds are similar to titles and then they appear over the top of images and video in the project that you're creating. You can just click on them and press play to see the type of graphic they have there. Subtitles, as you might expect, appear over the video and end credits can do the same as well. So you'll be able to see if it goes over the video or not because there is an image of a, a from the look of things, a man and a woman uh, with the text on top of it if it appears on top of the video, whereas there is no person behind them if it is not going to be on top of the video and going to have its own background. So we're going to use an opener. We're going to go with the classic Filmora opener, which is opener two. You see this on a lot of videos. So what I'm going to do is click on this, hold my mouse button down, and drag this to the very beginning of my project. Now I'm going to put it in this first row here, number one, and that's the option for what I can see. Underneath here, is, that's only for audio, so you can't drag this down any further. Cool. Now when I press play, so far we've got about five seconds of footage, and it is our title. So to change this, what you do is double click on it and you'll be able to change the text, right? So potentially I'm putting my branding in here, the interviewee's branding, or even uh, potentially my video series name. Maybe you call your interviews or the, the interviews that you're doing a particular series name. I'm going to use that for my example. Mine's going to be called Get to Know Liberty Village. Now, right now, my title is very long. It doesn't fit in this little box that I want it to. So you can just drag it in from the edges of this text field. If you really wanted to as well, you can actually move these around as you see fit. Now, underneath, I have another title here, which I can click on. 
to change the text as well. I'm just going to put in uh, Matthew KUT at the bottom, my name, right? So we have this as our introduction now. Get to know Liberty Village, Matthew KUT. And by looking at this, I can see that this is not far enough over. There's a little gap here next to the G, but a much bigger gap next to the E. So I can double click on this again, click on my title and adjust accordingly. That's looking a little better. Maybe even another little adjustment is needed as well. Cool. Now, another way you can fix this too is for you to highlight the text and put this in the center of this box. It'll make such a slight adjustment that you might not even notice it initially, but that will really solve that challenge of it being maybe far further over to one side than you're expecting. Okay, let's try that one more time. A little bit better there, could make a few extra tweaks if I wanted to. Now, my next thing that I'm gonna add in is my video. So I've already added this into my media section. You can just drag on your desktop, your video file, and then into this space, uh, your video and any images you're wanting to incorporate. I've got this uh, zoom into you here uh, that I'm gonna use as my video. So I hold my mouse button down once it's in Filmora and I drag it next to my opener. So now what's gonna happen is I'm going to have a nice flow through from my opener until my uh, video project that I've got here. So just to show you what we've got so far, I'm gonna press play from the very beginning. So we have our opener and you'll be able to hear the audio come through in a moment. Hey everyone, Jesse here with parkbench.com. Cool, so nice little beginning there. But what I did notice in this video is that not everyone is on screen at the same time. If I scroll this back a little bit, you can see it's just Jesse here for like half a second. And then the interviewees appear on the camera. So if I uh, wanted to make an adjustment here, there's really two options. Option number one is to add in a transition. This is going to be a graphic that kind of merges my opener and my video together, kind of fills the space in between. So I could add in something like a box turn. A box turn starts on one image and transitions to another, as you've seen here. So it would have my opener and then show my interview. Potentially, this could solve that issue. So to add in a transition, what you can do is hold it down and drag it between two pieces of content. Can't be the same piece. It always has to be two different pieces. Let's see what I've got there. Hey, everyone. Just didn't really solve the problem that I was looking to solve. It still had that issue there. It takes up about half a second of each project. So I'm going to get rid of that for now. And what I'm going to do is show you a strategy to remove a beginning section of your video. So what you do is use this little bar here that I've moved around every now and then, and you line it up with exactly where you want your edits to take place. So right now is when they're on screen over here is when they're off. So I'm going to line this up to where they are on screen, then click on the little scissors. That is now going to separate this big piece of footage from this little tiny piece that I don't want. So I can click on that and I can either right click, two finger click or delete it depending on what type of device I'm using. And that will get rid of that piece for me. So now when I play through this video, we're not going to have that gap like we saw before. Hey everyone, Jesse here with Parkbench. Nice and easy. Now, if we wanted to add that transition back in because we like the look of it, absolutely we can. We can drag that back in, play that again. Hey everyone, Jesse here with Parkbench. It's really up to personal preference. I would recommend going easy on the transitions that you're using. Some of them are a little bit uh, wacky. You know, it just depends on what you're wanting to be using. The simpler, the better, in my opinion. Fades are great. Box turns are great as well. You don't want to be overcomplicated with this because it can distract from the project that you're wanting to actually create. Something like that is very simple, whereas something like this can be a little over the top. Just depends on the project. 
Now, the next thing that we want to do is think about where we're going to incorporate titles into the interview. So let's play this and let's find a point where titles would be relevant. Hey everyone, Jesse here with parkbench.com. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Barbara Boffman and Kate Kubasek, real estate agents with Keller Williams Realty and sponsors and ambassadors of a local community website all about Newtown and Sandy Hook in Connecticut. So there are a few times here where you can put up either a fading title, which appears and then disappears, or just keep it present for the entire length of the interview. So both strategies involve really the same amount of work. One is maybe a little bit longer than the other. But what it requires is going into titles and then choosing a title under the lower third section. Now, there are a lot of options available from the very simple to the little bit more complex, but still in line with what we've got there. Anything with a graphic, I recommend using as a temporary title. So it only appears for four or five seconds or so. But anything like the default lower third, which is very simple, you can use for a longer period as there's no graphic. And so that's not gonna cause any issues down the line. We're gonna go with the default lower third. Let's keep it nice and simple here. And I'm going to drag and drop this uh, title just on top of our video project. So what's gonna happen now is that that title is gonna appear above our interview, but around the bottom area of where there's a black bar on the screen. Hey everyone, Jesse here with parkbench.com. Excellent. So this is a perfect position for the title of the two interviewees here. But if I wanted to move it, I can just double click on it and shift that over to the right hand side and have that listed here if I wished. So let's look at how we can create a title. So I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to put in the name uh, of the person that I uh, like that is interviewing them. So Jesse, our community manager, I'm going to put in her um, you know, position and I'm going to put in her business. Now you can keep it centered in the middle. You can have one, one side or the other. I'm just going to keep it centered here and I'm going to reduce the size of this so that way it fits in nice and well with what we're looking to do here. Now I have a tendency to expand these out to maximize that field there, just because that way I know that when I'm adding in a title on the left-hand side, it's gonna match. Excellent. So now we have got this nice title that appears under Jesse. If I wanted to have a title now for my interviewees, I could actually copy this by right-clicking or if you're on a Mac with a trackpad, two finger click. And then what I'll do is I'm gonna zoom out drag this little bar over to the right hand side and then right click or two finger click and then click paste. The reason why I do that is because it can sometimes put that title in the middle of your video. So it's a little annoying to fix. Now what I'm doing next is I'm actually adding this title above the one I already have. So I now have three rows of uh, my project here that I've created. So I'm going to go right back to the beginning and zoom in again. Now these titles or these rows will appear in order uh, for what you're going to see. So anything on the first row is going to be at the bottom. Anything on the second row is going to be above the bottom one. Anything on the third row is going to be above that one. Anything on the fourth, fifth, sixth is continually going above. So it's layering your content. So let's have a look at what we've created so far. Hey everyone, Jesse here with parkbench.com. Cool. Now you may be wondering, you added two titles, where is the other one? Well, it's over the top of it. So we're gonna to need to move this to the left-hand side. As you can see, it's just appeared there. Now we can change this here. I'm just gonna put in a uh, test interviewee. I'm gonna put in a test business, uh, oh, sorry, test uh, owner. And I'm gonna put this in as test business. So now I've kept the same size of that box, the same rough positioning, the same font. So it's all gonna match very, very well. Now these titles currently are gonna appear for about five seconds, but this is what we've created so far. So we've got our opener. We have our transition coming in. Hey everyone, Jesse here with parkbench.com. And then our titles. Now you will notice that if you start your titles right in the middle of your transition, you'll actually see them 
before everything else is sort of in place. You can see that the titles are there before everything else is ready. So to resolve that, you just highlight your titles, drag them slightly to the right, and Filmora will know that's roughly where the end of the transition is, and that will solve that issue. Hey everyone, Jesse here with parkbench.com. Cool, so boom, they appear. Now, if I wanted to move them into a different position later on, I totally could. You just highlight them, shift them as required. But right now, these titles are gonna disappear. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Barbara Boffman and Kate Kubasek. Now, you could have that intentionally and add in more titles for different things later on, where you just follow that same process and drag them down. Or you can actually extend these titles to appear for the whole interview. So if we move our mouse to the edge of the title, we can actually drag it out like I'm doing here. Now this is going to allow you to really maximize how long those titles are going to appear for. Now for certain titles that have graphics, when you do this, it can really mess up how that title is supposed to appear. So for Zoom, go with the default one. That's the best one to use. So now these titles are going to appear throughout the length of my nine minute interview, as you can see. So we're in pretty good shape so far in terms of what we've created. One final piece of the puzzle that many people want to add on is a logo. So to add on a logo to your interview, what you're going to do is upload ideally what's called a PNG file of your logo. Now the PNG file typically has a transparent background. Sometimes it doesn't, but usually it does. And the reason why you want that is it means that you can have that nice solid black background at the top of your video project, but then be able to see that um, file there. So let's show you what I mean. I'm going to grab this PNG and drop this down at the very beginning of where our titles are. You can see that this is now added on a fourth layer. It's a different color as this is an image. We're going to zoom back in. You're going to be scaling out and scaling in often with this. And then we're going to move our little bar across so that way we can see how this title, uh, how this uh, image is presented. Hey everyone, Jesse here with parkbench.com. So right now we've got the title on, but it's not in an ideal position. So to reposition this, we double click the image and you can actually drag this up to the top and then minimize it to a smaller size, depending on what you're looking for. Then reposition into the center, maybe make it a slightly bit smaller. But now we are in good shape and we have a refined look to our interview. Today I have the pleasure of interviewing Barbara Boffman. And now, as we saw with the titles, that is only set for about five seconds by default. So if we wanna change the length of that, what we're gonna do is scroll or zoom out we're going to click on our little project there, drag our mouse to the end, and then hold down our mouse button to drag this uh, file to make it go for the whole length of our interview. So now we're looking really good. We have our opener that's been added on. We have a transition. We have two titles, and we have our image or a logo at the top. So let's check out what we've created so far. Hey everyone, Jesse here with parkbench.com. Today I have the pleasure of interviewing Barbara Boffman and Kate Kubasek, real estate agents with Keller Williams Realty and sponsors and ambassadors of a local community website all about Newtown and Sandy Hook in Connecticut. So nice looking interview there. Now towards the end of our project, if we're wanting to add in any other little effects here, what we can do is scroll back to the beginning zoom in to our opener and copy this by right clicking or two finger clicking if you're on a uh, uh, mac like laptop or desktop we're going to paste this at the end of our project and just double check to see how this video ends thank you oh, bye let's wait till we're in the court up here with some more let's try that one more time how are you today ladies Thank you. Bye. Cool. So it's probably too close to have a transition here at the end of our um, project, but maybe jumping straight into our opener would be perfect. 
You don't want to put a transition in there if people are still speaking or moving around and as it relates to the interview, only if it's kind of areas that you don't really care if there's like nothing that's seen if, if there's a transition moving things around. But right now, that is really what we're going to do for our project. The goal is to not edit out pieces from the middle of it. You can by just lining this up though and clicking split with the scissors or the scissors over here and removing those different pieces by cutting that piece out. Uh, but this is really the core elements of what you're wanting to do. But there is one last thing that you're going to need to do, and that is to save this file. So at the top of your browser, and I'm just going to talk you through this, there's the option to click on file and click save, uh, depending on whether you're on a Mac or a PC. When you save the file, you're saving it as what's called a WFP file, uh, unless they've changed it by the time that you're watching this video. Now, WFP file or whichever file type it saves as by default is a Filmora specific file. It's only readable by Filmora. And it needs to uh, know that all the other elements you've used, such as your video and images, are still in the same place that they were when you started creating that project. So always save everything in one folder. Now, that allows you to come back to it and edit it as you see fit. If there are items that are missing from when they were located before, say it's the logo is gone or the video was put into the trash or a different folder from your desktop, what's going to happen is that Filmora is going to go, I don't know where that is. I can't use it anymore. It'll appear as red with a big exclamation mark on Filmora. And you're going to need to go and find that and using the location tool. So always save them in the same place, keep them together. But the last thing you're going to do after you save it and you know can come back to it later on is export it. Now, exporting is when you actually turn this into a proper file, right? So I'm just going to change my desktop here. So that way, or my view, sorry, so you can see this here. Now, this is where you are going to be able to actually turn this into a video file that's good for YouTube. So you click on export and this window pops up. You can save it as an MOV or MP4 file, as well as all of these other ones down here, realistically, these two options are perfectly suitable for what you're wanting to do. You don't need to get into all these other ones. But what you want to do is name the interview after the keywords you're wanting to rank for on Google. This is actually quite important. So name it after the people that you're interviewing. So what you do is say interview with business owner from business name in area at the very least. Okay, you might want to add in their profession, but those are keywords you want to have into that space. Next, by default, it automatically saves to output. You want to save that to your desktop so that way it's easy to find. And then the last piece is here is that you click on settings and you can choose the quality of this project. Best means it's the largest file type, takes the longest to export, the longest to put on YouTube, but it's the best quality. Better is usually just as good, but probably a little bit not as effective you can see the bitrate changes and then good obviously is about a faster project for you to upload um, but not as high quality usually these factors don't really matter but for those that are really wanting to make sure they create the best quality looking um, footage that's really key then once you're ready you click export and it will begin doing its thing and it will have a little pop-up showing you that this is working away my recommendation is have that work there and then go and focus on something else. For my laptop, I find that it slows everything down when it is exporting. And so it's a lot easier for me to just put that on there and then I'm going and making calls or I'm moving off and I'm going to go and make dinner or taking the dog for a walk. So that way this can do its thing. You can go and do yours and then come back when it is ready to go. One other little pro tip for myself, as I'm using a Mac uh, Book Air, which is not exactly the most effective computer to edit, but it's, it's the same thing as, as a lot of older PCs and Macs. Uh, one thing I find for myself that's beneficial is to actually reset your computer. So restart your computer, turn it back on, and then start editing then when it's nice and fresh. Uh, I find that if I'm doing this at the end of a long uh, session or a long day, my computer is just a little slow. It's a little tired by the end of the day. So this can really, really help. But that kind of wraps up our tutorial here for how to edit a Zoom interview. All of these things are applicable to an in-person interview as well. Uh, but here's our specific tutorial for you.
So I hope this is useful. And if you have any questions about how to use Fillmore X, be sure to reach out to our team at supportedparkbench.com via live chat at the bottom right corner of every Parkbench site uh, or over phone at plus one uh, 866 Our team is available from nine to five Eastern time, Monday to Friday, excluding public holidays where we are celebrating with our families. All right, everyone, stay well, and I hope this is beneficial.